here with Michael Myers, the owner of Bosky Feed here in Meridian, Texas. How's it going, Michael? Good. Crockett, how are you? Good. How long have you owned this? Like a year or something? Uh, going on two years this December. What made you want to buy a feed store? Well, I, I had no intention to get in the feed business <laughs> at all. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, the previous owner, Mr. Ed, he had it for 12 years. And uh, I stopped him one day to get some get a tub and some uh, some bags of cubes. And he was like, I'm thinking about retiring. You know anybody might want to buy me out? And uh, I was like, well, I mean, I can put some feelers out. He's like, it's an easy it's an easy buy. All you got to do is just buy the inventory. There's the, the place is a rental. And I was like, well, you know, that's not a bad deal. So I went home and I talked to my wife about it. I'm like, hey, this is, this is another business to get into. And I don't have to do any of the any of the hard work that I had to do with the first business. And uh, so we we spent a month doing our due diligence, going over the books. And uh, it just it made sense. Like it was a it was a turnkey deal. Um, so we decided to take off on the feed business and it kind of bloomed from there. We went from a, I don't know, a 30 by 30 little shack at the sale barn to now we're in 4,000 square foot warehouse. So mm -hmm. it, uh, it happened fast, a lot faster <laughs> than I anticipated. Yeah. You've definitely grown it, uh, changing locations. Like, did you, did you realize that or when you were thinking about buying it? Were you like, there, this is something I can really grow and, and transform into a real money maker, or were you, were you just kind of like, I'll just let it run its its course? I mean, for me, I'm always on like, what I can do to increase profit margins. Mm -hmm. Like, I do a lot of P and L reports, um, you know, anything I can to try and maximize. And I realized that being in a small place that we were in, we were only able to get like, maybe thirty tons would fit in that whole store. And so it's like a you know a couple pallets on this truck, a half truck here, and so I was still paying the same freight for such a for such a little amount of feed, and I'm like I can increase my margins if I have more storage space. Mm -hmm. And so I was like this is perfect. So now we we're set up so that we can hold we can hold about 200 tons of feed just in there, and that made our margins better. So I was able to grow it. You know, well we started growing it over there with shipping containers. You know, I ran out of space, so I started buying storage containers, mm -hmm. filling them full of feed to get that get that cost where I wanted to make it make money. And it just kind of, after like nine months, I was like, "This ain't gonna work. I gotta go. I gotta get bigger." <laughs> you, uh, knowing you now, getting to know you through this, um, it seems like you're always looking for opportunity. What? And I think this is at least your second business venture. What? What got you out of being an employee somewhere? to saying, hey, I'm gonna work for myself and, and build my own business. What was your first one? So, first business was uh, the land clearing business, double land management. That was what I, I started it as a part-time gig. Um, I still had a full-time job at the railroad, uh, but my full-time job at the railroad was only like 16 days a month. So I had a lot of time off, so I could, I could still get my feet wet in the land clearing. And I enjoyed that and my father-in-law was the big push to get out of being an employee. And he's always been an entrepreneur since he was 18 years old, multiple businesses. And he, he's been my mentor through all this. And he's like, why work for somebody and when you can work for yourself? And so I was like, you know what? That's not a, not bad. I just needed that, that push to work for myself. And just so happened, I was low man on a totem pole at the railroad when they were uh, cutting back. And that was the push I needed. Yeah. So. After that, it was like it was hustle and grind. And so I did the land clearing business for almost three years, and this opportunity came about. I'm like, okay, this is another another piece to the puzzle to make sure I never have to go back to work for somebody. So adding adding the feed store in made it made it more secure for me. I feel. Mm -hmm. And you now you also have the equipment and stuff right yep. out here. Tell us a little bit about that. Yep. So I've always just kind of hustled. I've always liked buying and selling and trading, and so started hitting up a lot of auctions and just buying equipment, good new equipment, some used tractors uh, and side-by-sides and just kind of filling that gap between having to go to the big cities. You know, people will have to go to Waco to buy buy side-by-side -side, or they'd have to go to, you know, Fort Worth. And it's like, I can I get the same stuff and sell it here, but I'm not gonna, I can't finance it to you, but I can sell it to you at a, at a you know, a discounted wholesale rate, I guess. And uh, that's turned into something really, really good. I mean, we sell stuff all over all over the country really mm -hmm. we'll put it on facebook marketplace and sell it and a truck will show up to haul it to some other state and yeah so that that that's worked out pretty nice um before that i had a 
used to sell cattle equipment, uh, working pens, squeeze chutes, uh, tubs is a company out of Australia. Um, and that kind of got me going into hustling as well with selling all that stuff and just kind of grinded it out. And yeah, I think, uh, like as an entrepreneur, like a lot of times, you know, you don't stick with the first thing that you start doing, but all the time you need to be learning like the, the successful people that I've talked to, like they all kind of have the same traits, even though they're in different industries. So as long, you just learn those, those laws or, or whatever you might call them. And then you can apply them to any industry. Right. And, um, also a lot of people I know, I mean, they're always looking once they get to where they're at that investor stage where they have some money built up, you know, always looking for opportunities to put it in buying a business or, you know, trading on something, right. putting, putting their money somewhere. But back to the feed store, um, what's your biggest seller here? Deer feed. Mm -hmm. You know, I moved here in 2011 and there were cattle everywhere, sheep, goats, the cell barn was moving big numbers. And it seems like more and more with the droughts and stuff like that, that people are getting, getting out of the cattle, moving their places over into deer leases or they're high fencing it and turn it to a game mm -hmm. ranch. And so we sell, I mean, on average, we sell probably about 140 tons of deer feed a month. Um, and that's just out of the store. That's not including what we sell straight to people's overhead bins. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's been a good thing. I've, I've always had a passion for the deer business. Uh, my, my wife's family is in deer business for decades. And so it's easy for me to talk to people about the right deer feed, the right, the right way to go on feeding their deer. Mm -hmm. And, um, so it's just an easy sell for me and we, we move a lot of it. Yeah. I see that a lot up through this direction, uh, probably starting around Cranswell's gap or something and then going Meridian and then going North. Right. Um, uh, and eat, I mean, even Clifton Valley mills, all of it, it's kind of, there's a bunch of absentee owners it seems mm -hmm. like in high fence places and a lot of people from dfw come down here and buy a weekend place or you know make it a hunting ranch their, right. their getaway or whatever so it i could definitely see that 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 deer feed is a is a high seller and you even you keep it out here in the overhead, keep bins, it overhead too. bins actually almost i got four compartments total and uh three of them are deer feed and one of them's cattle cubes yeah which the cattle cubes we run through we we'll probably sell 10 tons a month bulk cubes, mm -hmm. which is handy. They'll pull up, we'll load their trip hopper or their trailer. And I mean, it's just an easy, easy, easy way to do it. You've got the scale system. So it weighs it as it's going in. Um, and that was one thing I improved from the, from the old store was the system over there was you had the overhead bin, you had to put it into a tote sack. Then you had to take that tote sack and put it on a scale and weigh it. And after you weigh it, then you put it in the person and it was just, it just didn't work. Yeah. You were handling the feed too many times and this way, I mean, it just you streamlined it, it a little streamlined. bit. It streamlined it, made it so much easier. So, what was, about hay? Y'all go through quite a bit of hay here, don't a you? A lot. <laughs> I didn't realize how how much how many square bales people buy, but we sell. I think we did the deal uh, last week, and we sold almost ten thousand coastal square bales in twenty twenty three, and close to four thousand two string alfalfa square bales. Mm -hmm. So, sell a lot of a lot of hay, and uh, believe it or not, majority of our alfalfa doesn't go to horse people it goes to deer people that's what i was going to ask you is if uh if your hay sells if that was towards the deer too yeah. or if it was horse and livestock yeah. a lot of it a lot of it's deer i mean we still have our horse people yes but a lot of it's the deer mm -hmm. i mean it's just it's the the amount of protein and the nutrients you get from that versus you know a man-made pellet they mm -hmm. feed a lot of it yeah um i know how i got to know you and, and come over here is you found me on social media about my about diversified payments and the credit card process and what made you want to switch from your old system to that my old system was it was just old and dated um you had to manually enter everything into it um it was the the fee on it was not enough to cover a lot of the, the bigger cards that had like the cash back and mm -hmm. and all that and so I, I could still see that we were losing money on transactions when i when i put all the numbers together in the books and i I kind of started following you on Facebook, I guess, before you got into that. And uh, you started advertising that, and it, it just sounds like, you know what, this works because we we fit the mold of what you're trying to do. And so I wanted to get you in and see if you could help with that, and it, it's been great. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Um, it's crazy, like a lot of feed stores you see have the old 
dated, you know, equipment or way of doing things. And even you still see feed stores today that don't take credit cards and still write everything down on a, on a piece of paper. And, uh, but I also see a lot of those being sold to people like you and people our age. I've talked to several these past couple weeks about, um, switching stuff over and they're, they're seeing that that's a big movement now that a young person could get into is buying a business that's already established, already right. cash flown because there's so many of the baby boomer generation, you know, they're wanting to retire. They're tired of doing business. Oh, yeah. A lot of times they have established a great business, you know, and it's cash flowing, but they're, they don't want to run it anymore. They're, they want a little bit of money from it. Or right. if you can take it in and owner, the owner finance, fi finance it to you, where they still get that consistent cash flow and yeah. don't have the headache and but it's i always try and push for that owner finance mm -hmm. too because it, i mean it, it it works out great for them because they don't have to as far as the capital gains go you know they're not they're getting it over a long period of time versus you know getting that check from the bank all at once so mm -hmm. I, I, I did this place on owner finance and it helped me out because i was able to get the terms that i wanted put less money down and use my cash flow to to fund the feed store and right and so, yeah, and that's I bought this because the old owners had employee problems. They couldn't couldn't get workers. You know, they were in their late sixties, and they're they're out here slinging feed bags, and because they couldn't get a, a kid to show up for work. And yeah, I I still deal with it too, but not not as bad as they did. Mm -hmm. And it I think it makes a big difference. Like when you switch to a a newer system, most people are using cards, especially right. I would imagine here with a lot of the absentee owners. Oh, yeah. You can send that payment link out to yeah. them. Um, if they're not, you know, if it's absentee deal, you know, you can send that payment link to them in Dallas or wherever they're at and they can pay their bill right there. And then also you're able to save, you know, $500,000 a month, depending mm -hmm. on how much volume you're doing and put that back into the store or put it in your pocket or right. whatever, however you want to do it. Yep. It's a, it's a thing that I, I see a lot of people are looking at because how much business do you think is credit cards and cards now? Um, like I know, last month we was we ran a lot on credit cards. Mm -hmm. um, I would say credit cards are probably close to fifty percent. Yeah, you know, I mean, because we have charge accounts, and so a lot of these absentee people will they'll do a charge account for thirty days, and then on the first of next month we send their invoice out, and they'll have, they'll either pay with a credit card or they'll send a check. But during that grace period of of all that, we have our normal everyday customers, and they're usually credit cards, mm -hmm. credit cards, and they can. They can tap it. I love that that system now. Um, I like how you can email the receipt. That's like I said, the old system was very very dated. Yeah. I mean, you had to we had to manually put in our transaction fee, and at the process of that, you're wasting time. And I like to streamline everything. When your when your deal came out, and you just put the card in, and it has two options: cash or credit, and mm -hmm. it's already there for you. Now that was handy. Yeah, I see. Some of the people I talk to, I mean, they're like eighty uh, percent yeah. debit and credit cards. And um, that really cuts into to the margins on feed. You right. know, there's, oh, yeah. there's not a lot of margin yep. there on feed, so it really cuts into that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, we were at the the old system. You know, the old the way it went, we were we we're still losing money on the transactions. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's not a, a great margin. You know, I mean, you might you might make a dollar a bag on some feed. You might make a dollar fifty, and you've got to pay a percentage on a credit card. You know, it's convenient for them to swipe a card, but it's not convenient for me because I'm still losing money on right. the deal. Do you uh, do you have any big plans to expand anymore? Anything new coming to the feed store? Yeah, I need more storage space. <laughs> so we're about to finish adding on, add on to this side, add on to that side. I need to put another, if I can, another fifteen hundred to two thousand square feet, um, just so I can store more feed. Um, we're getting into deer season, so we sell we sell a lot of corn. I mean, we'll get to selling, we'll probably sell fifty tons of corn every ten days, and it's uh the more I can store here the better because we're on that we're on this like intersection where all the hunters come through and it, they just whip in on Saturdays and it's just we don't run out of corn so mm -hmm. I need I need more room to put deer feed put corn um I'd like to maybe in the future look for another location uh, if I can find something that that works you know we there are some other locations around here that that shut down and um, I feel like there's a a market there mm -hmm. for a smaller feed store nothing as big as what I have here, but just a smaller, smaller store to get what they need than bare necessities. Yeah. Do, what about 
as far as you looking for opportunities, are you still oh, looking? Or are you pretty always, full? <laughs> always. You've always got to, I mean, the worst thing I think you can do is leave your money in the bank. It's mm -hmm. not going to make any money. So if I can invest it in something, well, whether it's auction equipment or uh, land, real estate. I mean, my big deal right now is, uh, is land. I just mm -hmm. want to invest as much as I can in, in land. And I've, I've been trying, I've been doing okay at that so far, uh, but I need to get, oh, I want to do more of it. Just because they're not making any more of it, yeah. You know? So if I can get what I can get, and I feel like it's a pretty solid investment. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, we'll have to keep track of you. See yeah. what you got going yeah. on next. I'm trying. <laughs> Grind it out. Yeah. So, well, y'all come check out Bosky Feed here in Meridian if you're around the area. Uh, lots of deer feed, lots of hay. They've got cattle feed, uh, sheep and goat feed, horse feed, whatever you need. Um, y'all come check them out. <laughs>